We all want to satisfy our curiosity and pry into the minds of people around us. What is the truth behind their wet, fluttering eyes, behind their subtle facial expressions, which we aren't quite sure how to read? At first, telepathy is a parlor trick. You amuse yourself and others by reading their minds. You feel for the first time in your life, godlike. But then you want to know more. How do the most important people really feel about you? What secrets have they been keeping about your relationship, about their past? But that's a slippery slope we don't always want to go down. Our society, like every society on earth, is built on lies. Some of them small, some of them significant. We lie to one another. We lie to ourselves. It's not always a bad thing. Some people would even call it necessary for civilization to function properly and advance. In family, in love, and work, lies are an everyday occurrence that helps humankind get along. Even animals lie to one another in that green home space of the wild. Undercovering the truth of our wild is a painful process. Like the moment you find out your marriage can't go on anymore. Or simply growing up and growing out of everything you thought the world could be. And yet, if given the opportunity, many of us would still love that kind of power. Beyond just relationships, it would be an incredible advantage during war. That's why the military has spent millions of dollars in the past testing the realm of the paranormal. Decades of research went into probing the ability of the human mind. None of the laboratory tests ever gave back any promising results, only controversial ones. Many of which were shown to be fraudulent works on behalf of biased scientists. And yet, there are those of us today who may still believe in psychics, telepaths, clairvoyants, and mediums connecting this world to another. We can't definitely prove that people with supernatural abilities don't exist, but neither do we have evidence to prove that they do walk among us. So what then of the scientific route? We may not have been born with the ability to read a person's mind or control objects just by thinking about them, but neither were we born with the natural ability to survive space. Some gifts we must give ourselves by the way of ingenuity. The main obstacle to achieving telepathy or psychokinesis is the brain's weak energy output. The brain may consume up to 25% of our daily caloric intake, but its overall energy output is too weak to transmit electromagnetic waves. Even if we could admit more powerful brain waves to one another, we don't have the capacity to receive signals. For an alien race, this case may be different, and they may be able to communicate with one another through mental power alone, but the electrical signals in our own bodies are too weak. For telepathy and psychokinesis to become a possibility, we have to resort to technological help. The electrical signals in our brains represent thoughts. Activity here can be mapped out using procedures like EEG and MRI scans, both of which may someday be used as a much more reliable method of lie detection. EEG tests, for example, have revealed that when people lie, it results in an altered P300 wave in their brain. P300 waves manifest when a person comes into contact with something that is out of the ordinary for them. But with our current technology, we can only see a general pattern of thought. We may be able to see what parts of the brain are actively engaged, but we are far from being able to decipher specific words or phrases. Our insight into a person's thoughts is like hearing the lively chatter of a bustling crowd, but not being able to pinpoint one single voice in particular. It is mostly just noise. To achieve telepathy, we will start by building a dictionary of thought. Individual words or images will create specific fMRI or EEG patterns that we can then begin to compile into a dictionary. A computer trained to analyze these patterns will cross-reference the brain pattern images with our dictionary and reveal the patient's thought. This, however, will still only be a very general idea of what the thoughts are. It may never be possible for us to gather clear, distinguished phrases from a person's mind. In order to gather more accurate data, we need to map out every individual neuron in the brain. Of these, there are hundreds of billions, each connected in an intricate way and with pathways stimulated by thoughts. A future in which telepathy and psychokinesis are a reality begins with a better understanding of our minds. We must study, with ever greater precision, how our brains process our thoughts and emotions. It's strange to think that we are dissecting the very organ which makes us who we are. Every beautiful and every ugly facet of our personalities lies within its slippery fold somewhere sparking with electrical activity and changing with us as we grow and learn. It's this we must pry apart. Once we have a good hold on how our brains process information, we can share this information with a computer that will analyze the data 
cross-reference it with our dictionary, and identify a general idea of our thoughts. Receiving signals from someone else may lie in stimulating areas of our brain that will produce certain emotions or images. Mental stimulation in this way is already possible with radio waves. By studying their EEG test, it is even possible for a person to manipulate their own brain waves in a process known as biofeedback. This is the key in psychokinesis. On some level, we already do this. There is a technology available that helps paralyzed patients control particular objects with their minds. Patients are able to play computer games, move a mouse, or control the movement of prosthetics, among other things. But we can get even closer to psychokinesis than this. After thorough and intensive training, a person will know how to manipulate their brain patterns. These patterns will be read by a chip inside their head. The signals are sent to a computer for processing, and the computer will then carry out a command corresponding to the received brain pattern. One brain pattern may ask the computer to turn on a light, for example, or run a motor. It may be even possible to levitate objects through the use of electromagnets and future room temperature superconductors. The magnets would be attached to any object, and they would be activated via the computer, which in turn is activated by our thoughts. While all of us may want to accomplish feats such as lifting a car or setting an entire building on fire in an angry, bloody act of revenge, these examples violate the law of conservation of energy. A human body does not output enough energy to accomplish these things without help. But even if we are able to conjure these paranormal abilities by way of our technology, will we want to? To invent telepathy is to invent a power held only by the gods. It is to expose that which has only been private to us, dreams, secrets, prayers, like stripping down to something even more vulnerable than pure nakedness. As pointed out by physicist Michio Kaku, with godlike powers should come godlike wisdom and reasoning, neither of which we have.